And just when I thought the Icelandic mountains had welcomed me with open arms, and my ice climbing season could only get better, on the lay duty. And we can see the sun out, so that's nice. I quickly started to realize that this was about the time that things would stop going my way. Ah. Okay, do they look stuck? No, I think they... I think they, they just they wanted... Parked. They wanted to see you, they wanted an excuse. Yeah, they missed me. Yeah. They didn't need to stop hello. <laughs> Too long. But good shout for our crack today. So it's a bit windy right now. We're just kind of scoping the area. We haven't decided what waterfall we're going to climb yet. So, uh, how's it going so far? Are we uh, Brilliant. Is it looking good right now? It looks really, really nice. Super good conditions, it seems. Nice. I'm very excited to check it out. Okay, yeah, it looks like there's so many options. Yeah, a buffet. Right. We can still go deeper even, right? There's we can more. go further. We can go as far in as the river allows us to go. Nice. All right, cool. I'm yeah. excited. Let's nice. go. Nice. So many options, so many options. Okay, so into the deep end. You can already feel the spray coming from the waterfall. Yeah. There it is. The tallest waterfall in Iceland. Tallest waterfall in Iceland. Asterisk mark. <laughs> okay, so we arrived to the base of the route. Um, just trying to be as efficient as possible right now. Bjartur just started uh, climbing up the route. Uh, he hasn't placed the first screw yet. But um, yeah, the plan is just to go all the way up. Um, roughly four pitches. Once we get to the top, we will just uh, go down the other side. So we're making progress. Uh, I'm getting a bit of the spray from the water running on, under the frozen waterfall. And on the approach here, actually I got one of my boots wet. So I can feel my sock getting a bit cold right now. The water is just kind of like uh, soaking the rest of the sock. Uh, I have a change of socks in my backpack. I might just change before I start climbing up. Um, but right now we're just trying to kind of just be as fast as we can. Maybe it's worth it spending that, those extra few minutes changing my socks so that I can climb fast. We'll see.
to the right. Oh, that hurt. Ah, oh. that hurt so bad. I, oh, I thought you saw a big chunk just hit my ear. Oh. Like I just, I lost the hearing for a second. Ah, oh. oh. now I can finally like feel pain. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Oh, that was tricky, dude. What? That was tricky. Yeah. You're a beast. <laughs> good job. Good job. <laughs> Cheers. I felt really good on it. My head was really in, in it. So. That's good. Yeah. There you go. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was fun. But it was, it was not given. No, nope, for sure not. All right, so we made it to the first uh, belay station. Yeah. All right, going for the next one, yeah. right? A fast one. Fast one, because we got to avoid, well, can't see it from here, but there's a pillar that looks a little bit menacing. So we're just going to try to move fast. It's so, getting a bit sunny up there. That's, yeah. All right, good luck. So Biarto and I continued up the next pitch without any problems. It actually turned out to be the easiest out of the two pitches, but our least favorite due to the poor ice conditions. Now after this pitch is when the adventure took a turn for the worse, at least for me. And unfortunately I didn't get any footage of it, except for this moment that I captured as I was belaying on pitch 3. And I just had no idea what was going to happen next. When it was finally my turn to climb, I noticed that my arms and my hips didn't feel quite right. I started swinging my axe into the main pillar just to the right of my belay station, trying really hard to get at least three points of contact into the ice. And my arms just started burning and my hips felt completely dead. And I realized that because of where I was in relation to the next ice screw, if I had to let go, I would take a swing. So with the little strength that I had left, I made the choice of connecting my ice axis to my harness and let go. I took a few minutes to shake my arms off and figure out my beta. Perhaps there was a way to get out of this spot. I tried again and I just couldn't hold on to my tools for more than a few seconds. So I fell again. I was just completely pumped. And at that moment is when I forced myself to accept that I was stuck. And that was honestly just the hardest thing to do. Now, I remember Biartur yelled something, but I couldn't quite make out what he was saying. I tried to reply and it seemed like he couldn't really hear me either. At this point, completely incommunicated from my partner, my only idea was to try to ascend the rope. So I set up my leg loop to a T-block and I connected myself to the rope, but I could barely use my arms to pull myself up. I was barely making any progress and I just knew that it wouldn't be enough. As I was hanging off the rope, resting, without many options to really get out of there, I was really hoping that Biarto would somehow realize what was happening and will set up a hauling system to try to bring me up. A few minutes passed and I felt a strong pull on the rope. I realized that I was being pulled up. So I put away all of my devices and then I just started getting dragged up over 20 plus meters of vertical ice and I just did my best to remove all of the ice screws along the way. When I finally made it to Biarthur's belay station, I was completely exhausted, not just physically, but mentally. And even though we only had a short section of climbing left before the summit, we knew that it just wouldn't be the best option. So instead, we opted for rappelling down and getting back the same way we came from. 
Looking back at it, I can identify so many small mistakes that contributed to my body not performing the way it was supposed to. And there's just so many things that I wish I would have done differently when I got stuck. But all I can do now is just learn from those mistakes and be thankful that I had a solid partner and that we were both able to get out of that situation safely. Now, I'm not going to say that this was not a good day because it actually started really fun and I got to learn a lot throughout the whole experience. But accepting failure is certainly very difficult. But at least I know that eventually I will make my way back to Gleamer and finish what I started.